magical, he says. It's absolutely magical. Oh, are we gonna have to walk through the smoker's lounge? That is like the worst thing ever. Walking, there's nobody there. Walking, well, there's somebody right here walking. Huh? There's somebody right here walking. With a sticky? That's yeah. Too. Yeah, he's walking with me right there. It's on the walking path. Anyway, good morning, friends, and happy Thursday. Today's Thursday, November 2nd. Brian's got his coffee. We're ready to go to Epcot for a few hours. And then we have a couple of fast passes this morning for Epcot. And then we have to go over to the ESPN zone to get all of our... Real nice. Anyway, we have to go over to the ESPN zone to get our stuff for the run tomorrow. We have to get our little bib and our t-shirts and our pins and all the fun things that they have over there. And that is the expo, the running expo. So that is where we are headed today. And then this afternoon for lunch, Brian found a really cool sushi place outside of the parks. So that's where we are going to go. We should have went that way, but that's okay. I don't know either. I'm talking and walking at the same time. No big deal. Ooh, new pillows. Don't you guys just love these carts? Oh, look at their room. How cute. King Triton over there. Oh yeah, by the way, that fish's name that I was trying to think of yesterday, Flounder. His name is Flounder. So, it took me a few minutes, but I remembered. Are you ready for Epcot, babe? Sure. Sure. He's so excited. Can you tell? Cronut. Oh, yes. He wants a cronut. Oh, good grief. He really screwed us. Like that. Yeah. That is. There is like no walking path. Oh, brother. Oh, yes. And by the way, I'm wearing a pair of tan shorts and this cute I Love Mickey shirt. And I'm using my Dooney and Burke Mickey bag. That's what I'm using today. Brian, care to model what you're wearing today? No? New underwear. Oh, <laughs> yes, he's wearing new underwear. I don't know a brand, but Target had him. Oh my goodness. New underwear. Thanks. Thank you. And we're here. We're at Epcot. Woohoo! Good grief, though. See, they're supposed to be getting rid of all these. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Happy birthday, Harry! Oh, yeah, I'm sure she's going to love that. <laughs> so much for not sweating because. I'm sweating, bad. It's really humid outside, even though it's like in the 70s right now. So, got my rag. And I did get my picture taken in front of the bubblegum wall before my hair started looking bad. So, that's done and over with. We are gonna head over to the land right now to see what we can get on over here. This park is actually pretty crowded this morning. Don't stop in the middle. Have to stop in the middle. Oh, yeah, I know. I don't know why people do that. It's so annoying. I love it. I need that hat. Oh, I didn't see it. No, you need this one right here to the left. over to Nemo too. The seas. Yep. Waste some time over there. Go to what's his face? Figment over here. Yeah, we'll see what we can get on in here. Thank you. 
right. Yep. Welcome to a voyage of discovery and awareness of the richness and diversity of the world. Sudden changes in swimming. The approaching storm may seem violent and destructive to us, but to nature, it's a new beginning in the cycle. Millions of gallons each year. 
Our small fish farm produces nearly 5,000 pounds of fish each year to serve in restaurants around Walt Disney World. Innovations like this one can play an important role in our efforts to produce bountiful harvests and still protect the natural resources. Huh? They never hardly have anything in them. Those are being eaten. <laughs> They don't have that Christmas yet. Not yet, they will. <laughs> Give it some time. Hidden Mickey in there too, though. While there are more than 50,000 edible plant species in the world, mm, here's my most of us are only familiar with the handful that make up our everyday diet. The common grains growing here, wheat, maize, sorghum, and millet, plus rice, account for nearly two-thirds of our global food consumption. Learning how to increase oh, yields quinoa. of these staples is an important goal of research around the world. These plants are definitely on their way up. Innovative growing techniques like these increase yields while more efficiently using resources like water, fertilizer, and pesticides. Another innovation at work here is our integrated pest management program. By populating our greenhouses with beneficial insects that prey on harmful pests like aphids and flies, we are significantly reducing our reliance on conventional pesticides. We're growing these crops using our nutrient film system. This technique precisely controls and recycles water and nutrients. With it, we can produce over 27,000 heads of lettuce a year in this one small area. Oh my gosh, it feels so good through here. Some of our best ideas have been inspired by nature. We need to like do that with tomatoes. Vegetable trees. We'll try to make tomatoes by grow that way. By growing these plants vertically, we can increase yields and better control diseases. These crops taste as good as they look. Mm -hmm. In fact, we serve more than 15 tons of produce from our greenhouses in restaurants here at the land every year. Oh, they're doing the drawer. Yep. The future of agriculture may include innovative ideas like this vertical growing system. Plants grown in this way use a fraction of the Mickey space right required there. by traditional growing methods. That saves water and increases production. The aquaponics system on your left combines hydroponics with aquaculture. The fish provide a natural source of fertilizer for the plants, and the plants help keep the water clean for the fish. It's another great way to produce more while using less. In our lab, Epcot scientists are working with the U.S. Department of Agriculture on a number of innovative projects. <laughs> So we are now headed over to Touch Track. Um, living with the land was not like a 10 minute wait. It was like a forever wait. And now we are headed for Touch Track and we have Fast Pass. Well, right, five minutes. Yeah. No, I want to do it with you. Oh, well, we have Fast Pass, so. Where's the Fast Pass? So much fun.
did you change for the capability? No. You gotta go back. I don't know what, oh. what to change for, but it's capability. Right. I don't know. What does capability mean? Like for car wise. Technology activated. Welcome to the Sim Track. We'll begin with the capability test to see how your vehicle designs perform under challenging weather and surface conditions. Monitoring road surface. Connecting to OnStar. SimCar performance data acquired. Let's see how your designs hold up now. Commencing sim car off-road and extreme weather sequence. <laughs> Capability oh, test yeah, results nice. displayed and verified. Oh, no. Now let's see how your vehicles compare when it comes to their efficiency. Uh, Responsiveness data is now being seen. Automated driving technology verified and active. technology disengaged. Displaying responsiveness data. Oh jeez. Suzanne and Sandy today at Epcot. It was so nice meeting you ladies. I love meeting friends on the internet. <laughs> Brian's like fascinated by this lady. <laughs> oh, now she probably won't do more. But it was so nice meeting you guys and Brian really thought it was really nice meeting you. I'm not, I'm talking. I'm talking. <laughs> Um, anyway, um, it was so nice meeting you guys today, and I love meeting like internet friends and everything. And I feel like, yeah, I feel. The um, security guard keeps um, 
singing and Brian was like really fascinated by the fact that she kept singing. So and then he was like and then he we have to go straight. Probably they have to, we're on the other side. Oh well that's why I said we need to go. Oh over. yeah, probably so. Well we'll cross when we get up here. Uh, In Hugh. I can't even talk right now. Yeah, we went across somewhere. Because we are parked right on the other side of this monorail. Anyway, so what I was saying was, it was so nice meeting Suzanne and Sandy today. Yes, Bray? Yes. Yes, they were like super nice people. And I think they would be like, we could be friends. If I lived in Alabama or y'all live close, we could all be friends. I think it'd be so fun. I love having Disney friends. I love having internet friends. So nice. Okay, so as we usually do, Brian and I like to leave the parks to come have lunch. And y'all know how much we love our sushi. So we're gonna try this sushi place, which is just right outside of Disney. So we're gonna try it and see what it's, what it's all about. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, huh? So we're assuming that it's pronounced Oishi, Japanese cuisine. And they have a lot of good choices here. Um, what are you getting? You're getting the salmon in and out? Yes. And then I'm going to get the Disney roll. I love that. That's so cute. And then I'm also going to get a house salad. But yeah, everything looks really, really good here. I love it. Very, very excited. So that's what Brian's looks like. You already tried a piece? It's good? Yeah. And this is what mine looks like. The Disney roll. Because it looks so pretty. It's so pretty you don't want to eat it. And then we got some edamame as well. And I got a salad and I ate it. Oh, you're stealing one of mine. Mm. Okay, you gotta tell me what you think. Good? Yeah. Cool. 